Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Golden Blooded is a college football YouTube channel for entertainment. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get into our next college football video. Don't forget to send gear to represent your team. The address is P.O. Box 360, Liberty South Carolina 29657. Yes, we are still doing that. Just wanted to put that reminder in there because I haven't reminded anybody here recently. Well, the good news is uh, I tested for COVID and I tested negative. The bad news is I still feel like crap. They were supposed to test me for flu yesterday, but I, I guess they just forgot. So I, I could have the flu and not know it. I don't know. I, I just feel like crap, but I don't have COVID. So that's a plus. There's always a silver lining around everything. Don't have COVID, just don't feel very good. There, there's not a lot of things that, that throw me off when it comes to college football because upsets happen, comebacks happen, a lot of crazy things happen. Trick plays, uh, fake punts two-point conversions, onside kicks. Yeah, that's part of college football, right? But I'm telling you, for whatever reason, TCU upsetting Michigan, that threw me for a loop. It, it really, really did. And, and I wasn't trying to disrespect TCU whenever I predicted Michigan to blast them because pretty much everybody was. I mean, you looked at their comparisons, and Michigan had the advantage in every area except for one. There was one area that Michigan did not have the advantage, and it was at starting quarterback. McCarthy, not quite as good of a quarterback as Max Duggan. He's a good quarterback, but not quite as good as Max Duggan. And I knew that going into the game, even when I did my pregame prediction for it, but I just, you know, that was one category. What's that gonna do? I mean, maybe make it close, perhaps? That's what I was thinking, that was my, my rationale. Max Duggan is a fighter. Let me tell you something, and the rest of the team rallies around him. I mean, two pick sixes, that's that's basically what gave them the win. You take those two pick sixes off the board, and I think Michigan does, does beat TCU easily. I mean, the first one started off the game. That first pick six was in the first quarter at the beginning of the game. You talk about momentum going in the favor of TCU immediately. That's how you do it. Pick six to start off the game, momentum, boom in TCU's favor. Michigan battles back, but guess what? In the third quarter, when it seemed like they had all the momentum in the world and, and maybe Michigan was about to take that step forward and start pounding on TCU, uh-uh, another pick six. So the fighting spirit in TCU, that's an intangible that you just, you can you have to factor in. You don't know how to, how to factor it in or what kind of factor is gonna be in the game, but you have to factor it in. TCU upsetting Michigan through me for a loop. I can't lie about that. It, it, it most certainly did. What about TCU versus Georgia? Nobody, including myself, thinks that TCU can beat Georgia. Does anybody think that they can even keep it close? I, I think that's possible. But I'm telling you, everything is in the favor of Georgia. And, and TCU does not have that one advantage, the quarterback advantage. No. Georgia actually has an elite quarterback themselves. I mean, both Stetson Bennett and Max Duggan went to the Heisman Trophy ceremony. So they're both really, really elite. Neither one of them won. It was Caleb Williams for USC, but they got there. They're both elite. I don't see any category. I I'm looking at all these categories. I don't see any category where, where TCU holds the advantage. I, I really don't. So on, on the year, TCU averages 41.1 points per game. Georgia averages 39.4 points per game. I mean, that's like a point and a half more, but really that's, that's, that's nothing. I mean, it could be the difference between a win and a loss, but that's not any type of advantage. What about the defense? TCU allows 25 points per game. Georgia allows 12.8 points per game. Yes, they did allow 41 against Ohio State, but man, that's a good defense. That is definitely an advantage for Georgia. For TCU, they average 269.6 passing yards a game. Georgia actually averages more. 293 passing yards a game. Everybody talking about Georgia rushing team. Georgia, no, not not necessarily. They are good at running the ball, but they have a better passing game than TCU. What about rushing? TCU averages 204.5 rushing yards a game, and Georgia averages 201.9 rushing yards a game. So, slight 
advantage in favor of TCU, but still pretty even. What about defense? TCU allows 235.6 passing yards a game. Georgia allows just 215.1 passing yards a game. So now we're starting to see the difference on defense. What about rush yards? TCU allows 149.5 rushing yards a game. Georgia only allows 77. I think that's the stat that pops out the most to me. Georgia doesn't allow people to rush the ball all that much. And TCU relies on Max Duggan and his legs. Yes, passing, of course. But those legs of Max Duggan, that, that's the make or break moment for TCU. And Georgia Georgia just doesn't allow that very much. Uh, look at the, the quarterback c comparison. Max Duggan, 253 for 397. That's 63.7%. Two for 3,546 yards. 32 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. Dual threat quarterback. Pretty good dual threat quarterback. 127 carries for 461 yards. That's 3.6 yards a carry and 8 touchdowns. For Stetson Bennett. 292 for 430. That's 67.9%. Two for 3,823 yards. 23 touchdowns. 7 interceptions. Dual threat quarterback as well. 54 carries for 166 yards. 3.1 yards a carry and 8 touchdowns. Very very similar stats. Now, Max Duggan runs more, but as far as yards per carry, just about even. Max Duggan, 3.6 yards a carry, and Stetson Bennett, 3.1 yards a carry. Another thing that I want to talk about is the maturity, the veteran players on both of these teams. Max Duggan has been at TCU for four years. Stetson Bennett has been at Georgia for four years. What about the running game? I, I'm not sure if TCU's running back is still going to be injured for this game, but for Georgia, they have three competent competent elite running backs and they're also mature veterans Kenny McIntosh, 141 carries for 779 yards 5.5 yards carrying 10 touchdowns this year he's been at Georgia for four years Kendall Minton 76 carries for 557 yards 7.3 yards a carry and seven touchdowns he's been at Georgia for three years Dejon Edwards 134 carries for 741 yards 5.5 yards carrying seven touchdowns he's been at Georgia for three years. And then you can't forget about Brock Bowers. He's only been at Georgia for two years, but still 56 receptions for 790 yards and six touchdowns. What about the injuries for Georgia? Will Darnell Washington be able to go for the national championship? Will Ladd McConkey be able to go for the national championship? I don't know. I don't think that will matter. Georgia has a bunch of veteran players. Now, TCU also has veteran players, just like Max Duggan and Quentin Johnson, one of the best wide receivers in the nation, maybe the best wide receiver in the nation. This year, 59 receptions for 1,066 yards and six touchdowns. He's been at TCU for three years. Hello, this should tell you something. Experience matters. Not everybody can beat Alabama and grab five stars and four stars through the transfer portal all the time. I'm sure Georgia could if they really wanted to, but that's not how they operate things. They don't really build their team on the transfer portal, and they don't lose a lot of players through the transfer portal. A lot of these players are three and four year players. Same for TCU. We are going to be watching two mature, two experienced, Two veteran teams go at it. Yes, I think Georgia is the better team. Yes, I think they have more athleticism and skill. But the bottom line is, this is going to be one of the oldest national championship games when it comes to age of the players and how long they've been at their university that we've seen in quite a while. The transfer portal has wrecked all this. And it coincides with the NIL. We will watch a good national championship and I do think experience will help TCU. I do think Georgia is the better team. But I think this game is going to be a lot better than people think. Even myself, I think I'm going to be surprised. But the experience factor on both sides of the ball, both of these teams do not make a ton of mistakes. The only thing that makes me hesitate about TCU is they did need two pick sixes against Michigan and still only beat them by six points. A really, really good elite team. If they get two pick sixes, you should blow out your opponent. And I do not think that TCU will get two pick sixes on Georgia. I just don't think they will. Having said that, I hope for a good national championship. If TCU does beat Georgia, I'm not going lie, I'll be surprised. I hope they do beat him. I hope I am surprised. I just don't think it's going to happen. But I do think this is going to be better than people realize. Guys, take this one in. We might not see a matchup like this where you have two teams with veteran players going at it. This is going to be a fight. And hopefully, hopefully, TCU can keep it close. I still have Georgia. I have them by a couple scores. I'm going to take Georgia 38-20 over TCU. And let's be honest, the playoffs has been a lot closer than usual. So hopefully the national championship will be a lot closer than usual. This is going to be a good one. Can... 
TCU shocked the world. So y'all let me know in the comment section how much of a chance do you give TCU beating Georgia? Number one, do you think TCU beats Georgia in a close game? Number two, do you think Georgia beats TCU in a close game? Or number three, do you think Georgia beats TCU in a blowout? And no, I don't have the option of TCU beating Georgia in a blowout. I don't think that's possible. That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.